The Cleveland Browns have a new head coach, Kevin Stefanski, the former Vikings offensive coordinator, and he was with the Vikings organization from 2006. He arrived with Brad Childress, for crying out loud. And now, after all those years in Minnesota, Stefanski moves on to become the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. It really is kind of strange to think that he got rewarded for what a bad job we saw on Saturday. Uh, and the fact that the Vikings lost opened the door for him to be hired on Sunday. Chris, I got the impression they were hiring somebody on Sunday. And that if, if, if the Vikings somehow had won, they were hiring somebody else. It just shows you how weird and arbitrary this process can be and how considerations other than getting the absolute best guy can overcome, uh, you know, uh, just – Common sense uh, and and this idea that we have to have somebody now. We have to have somebody now. We can't wait a week. We can't wait two weeks, even though that's our guy. So if we can't get that guy, we're going to get somebody else. And I saw a suggestion last night from someone. I think it was Mary Kay Cabot of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. It was either going to be Robert Sala, the 49ers defensive coordinator, or Kevin Stefanski. It all just depended on who lost the game on Saturday. Well, yeah, that's just absolutely ridiculous. I just don't know anyone to say it. And I, I you know, listen, I mean, you know, I just – I don't know what to say. Cleveland's a dumpster fire. That's all I can really say. That's a dumpster fire. What What in the world? And listen, I want to make sure. this. We're talking football here, okay? This is football. This is nothing personal, all right? Kevin Stefanski, I've never really met him in my life. I don't know him. I'm sure he's a really fine guy. I know some of the human beings in Cleveland. They're good human beings. Stefanski, good human beings. I'm talking strictly football here. I don't know what the hell you would hire Kevin Stefanski for. I'm sorry. I don't know. And Mike Zimmer, Mike Zimmer's telling you not to hire him. I mean, have you listened to the quotes he says the last eight weeks of the year? He's telling you Kubiak's the greatest thing that's happened to this since he's been there. Everything he praises is Gary Kubiak. But Stefanski's going to get a head coaching job. What the hell is Cleveland doing? All right? I don't know. So I just don't get it. He's not – we've watched the offense. There's issues in Minnesota. If they can't run the ball, I mean, it's the most basic bullcrap offense we've seen. So what are you really getting here? And to me, that's where Cleveland's a dumpster, dumpster fire. And, and, Mike, the other thing that bothers me, too, is the more and more I hear, you know, hey, Cleveland, the analytics team's running the organization. Jimmy Haslam just listens to the analytics team. They're running the squad. Hey, we were, we were doing baseball you know, a few years ago, but now we're going to tell an NFL team how to run the team. I don't get it. So back to Cleveland, I don't believe Lynn. You're back to the mistake by the lake. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Sorry, I had to get it off my chest. No, no, that's fine. I'm glad you said it, not me for a change. Yeah. But let me add to it a little bit. Paul yeah. Podesta, the chief strategy officer who's a part-time employee, doesn't even live in Cleveland. I was told late in the, in the regular season there was a chance he was going to leapfrog John Dorsey in the organization, but he wouldn't move to Cleveland. But the guy still got tremendous influence, and they let him hire his guy. Stefanski is the guy he wanted last year. Must be, right. John Dorsey wanted Freddie Kitchens, so now D. Podesta gets his guy. And there's some reporting out there from the Canton Repository that suggests that the head coach had to agree to a lot of things, like submitting the game plan in advance and meeting with the analytics team, having the analytics team pour over everything. Uh, just a lot of demands that make you wonder, are you really in charge? And that may be one of the reasons why Josh McDaniels what? Who would ended want up not to deal being with the that? guy. Who would want to deal with it? Why would Kevin you want to? Kevin Stefanski? I mean, yes, he's just so desperate. You know, this is a guy. They basically took a guy that was like, this guy will do anything to be a head coach. Oh, well, we'll hire you. You'll listen to us. Submit a game plan to the analytics department. Are you freaking kidding me? The analytics department making in-game decisions? about what to do in certain situations. Like, I, I get the hell out of here, Cleveland. That's all I got to say to you. Get the hell out of here with that crap. I mean, that's unbelievable. <laughs> that's so dysfunctional. And, and, and look, I don't look, know. And again, these are fine human beings. This is not personal. Right. This is just me, Chris Sims, talking football and what I know and people I know and how organizations are run. And this just ain't how it's run. I don't know. So it just it's bothering, it bothers me. And just so we're clear, because the pro analytics crowd can be very loud and very aggressive. Right. We're not saying analytics has no place. It does. But to give the keys to an analytics guy to hire his coach and micromanage that coach like you are a kid playing Madden, right? That's what becomes problematic. But, you know, here's where I see something that I think is encouraging for the Browns long term. And by long term, it may be 10, 15 years. 
If Paul D. Podesta is going to be hovering around the organization, whispering in the ear of ownership, at some point, let him be accountable. Let him pick the coach and let it work or not work. Because this time, if it doesn't work, it's on him. And if this fails, then he needs to go. You know, too many of these football organizations have people who find a way to influence ownership Politicking. and to get their agenda right yeah and and when everything goes well they take the credit and when the stuff hits the fan they run and hide and say we're not football people pull them into the light and make them accountable and if it works you get the credit and if it fails you get out of here yeah and 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 i think that and so it's either gonna so good news browns fans this is either gonna work and great, you're going to have a team that's a contender. You deserve it. Browns fans have suffered for too long. If it doesn't work, then maybe Haslam snaps out of the spell that Paul DePodesta has on him and says, hey, Paul, we tried it. Yeah. See you later. Right. You're out. We're going to try a different way. Agreed. Now, where they go from there remains to be seen, but it's it's one way or the other. Yeah. And I think it brings it all to a head. Right. We'll see if it works. Well, I mean, You yeah. think it won't. Well, no, I don't. I don't. You know, analytics, I'm with you, Mike. I mean, they're a part of the game, yes. To let it overrun your team, it just doesn't tell the truth always. You know, it doesn't. Hey, analytics, all the analytics I heard, Will Greer was the second best quarterback in the draft last year. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> Carson Wentz was in the top 20 pick or a top 20 quarterback. Bull crap, he's not. He's a top six. Tell me how the analytics did there. There's issues in that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.